Hey, welcome back to Drink Wine, Make Quilts. Happy to have you here. So today we're going to be finishing up our kite quilt series. What we're going to be doing is working on tying a quilt. And so even if you haven't been working with us on our series and you don't know what I'm talking about, first of all, go check it out. Second of all, it's okay because you're here to learn how to tie a quilt without quilt frames and that's equally just as good. Uh, so we'll be doing that today. Then there will be a separate video on how to bind your quilt and finish it. So make sure to check that out. But I'm excited to get this one all finished off. I do have a little caveat about this video. I will not be featuring a wine this video. <laughs> I am taking an antibiotic right, right now. And they very specifically told me, not only the doctor, but the pharmacy when I picked it up, that I am to not have alcohol while taking this antibiotic because it will make me throw up. So that's fun. <laughs> so I would love to hear what wine you were drinking this week. Uh, I, <laughs> whew, I was debating whether or not to still feature a wine, but I'm like, I'm not even going to be able to drink it. Can I fake drink it? Should I fake drink it? Every answer led to no. Um, okay. So let's get started. Now, what you're going to need for this video is you're going to need your quilt face, some batting, which I have, but I haven't gotten out yet. Some backing. Your yarn and a yarn needle. If you're wondering what that grunting and groaning and weird noises are in the background, it is my puppy who has decided in this moment in time that he has a spurt of energy. He's very cute. His name's Roy. He is, I can do math five months old, and he is a terrorist. He actually has his my slipper in his mouth right now. He doesn't chew anything up, and so I just let it happen, and I probably shouldn't. I'm gonna regret that one day. But for right now, it's fine. Everything's fine. So those are the items we need. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to adjust our quilt backing. So if you have your quilt face, it most likely, depending on your quilt and what you're doing, maybe you're doing a table runner, whatever. But for this specific kite quilt, this quilt face is not going to be the same shape or the same square as your backing. And so what you have to do is look at your backing, if you pull it all out and lay it up next to your quilt face, Dun, dun, dun. Let's see here. Ooh, this is more work than I thought. Okay. Oh, you know what? I might be in luck. Let's see. I am. I'm in luck. It's going to fit. Yay! So if it doesn't fit, if you go from side to side, and let's say it goes to here. And so you have, let's say that you have all of this extra right here because your backing only goes to here. That's why you buy so much backing. You cut off the end and then you sew, I almost said glue, don't glue. You sew the two sides together and then it's gonna make a really big piece of backing. But what you want to do for right now, whether it takes sewing or not, you're going to match up your, your backing. I cannot believe this fits. This is amazing to me. I did not need to buy that much fabric. Fabric recording. Um, you line up your backing and you're going to cut it and so that it fits almost perfectly around the quilt. It's okay to have a little bit extra um, and that's actually when I'm tying a quilt, I kind of like having that extra there. And so I like to keep a little bit of extra. You don't need to worry so much about the selvage because your binding is going to cover that selvage when you close up your, uh, when you close up your binding. So, uh, don't worry about the selvage. If you have some on your backing and it's like part of your backing, that's fine. Um, so what you'll want to do is you're just going to want to get this cut and ready to go. 
you'll also want to do the same with your batting. So whether you got batting in a bag or if you have batting on a roll, you're going to want to roll it out and get it to the same size. You're going to see how I do this all, okay? And I do this without quilt frames. I've mentioned before, I've never made a quilt with quilt frames in my life. I used to not have room for them to like even store them, let alone lay them out um, and leave them out. And so I've always found a way to get around it. And that's what I'm doing with you today. So I'm going to gather up all my supplies. I'm going to get it all ready to go. And I'm going to grab my masking tape, my yarn, and my yarn needle and I'm going to get started. So I'm going to go get all set up and I'll be back. Okay, so I have here on the floor my backing laid out. I put my batting over it. Double check my backing. I don't need to worry about it being totally perfect as of right now. I'll be taking care of that in just a minute. I'm just getting a general idea so I can get it all cut. Lay out my quilt, which turned out super cute. Make sure that it's lined up with the backing, which it's not. So we're gonna go down just a little bit. Take out. Again, not looking for perfect right in this moment, just looking for generally good. And now we cut. Now, as I cut, I am gonna try to cut pretty close that edge. I'm going to leave some space just in case. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to cut around the perimeter of the quilt. Again, I don't want to, I'm going to cut close to the edge, but I'm not going to cut all the way to the edge because I don't know how accurate this is since I haven't laid it all out. Yep, with the masking tape. If you have a large table or a large kitchen island, that would be a great place to do this as well. You just need a large space. And actually, what I realized when I went to go cut this quilt, this is the first time I haven't had a large hard floor place, unless I went downstairs in the basement. So now it's cut generally to how we want it. And so now we're going to start the masking tape process. So what I do is I roll this back, I pull this tight, I have my masking tape. I'm going to tape an edge over here and I'm going to pull tight from that end. So where I'm already taped, I'm pulling it tight, but not terribly tight. We don't want it to be crazy tight. We just want it to look good. And the reason I use masking tape is because it removes really easily without a lot of residue. Now, you'll notice that your batting is gonna stick pretty good to the back of your quilt here. And so I generally only mask the masking tape the bottom. I don't necessarily worry about this top part. So I'm gonna lay it out flat. Do you see that corners match? Corners match. I'm going to fold this way and now I'm going to pull tight again. Again, not insanely tight, just tight enough. And now I got all four corners down and ready to go. So now I'm ready to tie. All right, getting ready to tie the quilt. I need some scissors some safety pins, some yarn needles. I used some extra thread, which I'll show that for just a minute, and the yarn. 
So looking at your quilt, you want to decide where you're going to tie. And everyone is probably a little bit different on how they're wanting to tie, but I'm going to tell you what I am wanting to do. I'm going to tie in the middle of each pinwheel. So each pinwheel will have one. And then I'm also going to look, so if this is the center of my pinwheel right here, and my pinwheel matches right here, I'm also gonna tie right up here, going about an inch in. And I'm going to grab a measuring tape and measure it now that I'm looking to see exactly what it is that I'm wanting to do. And so I can make sure that's as accurate as possible. And so now that I know what I wanna do, let's get tying. So as you can see, I'm just sitting on the top of my quilt. This makes sure that I have no movement around me and also just frankly makes it easier to sit here and do this. So we want to start with the yarn. Okay, so you're going to take a longer piece of yarn. You don't want it terribly long, but you don't want it short because then you're having to redo it over and over and over and over again. So I'm going about the length of my hand to the center of my chest. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. So you're gonna take your thread and you're just gonna cut off a little end of it. With your thread, you're just gonna create a small loop. And put your yarn through the loop. Then you're going to take your needle, you're gonna thread your thread through the eye of the needle. Apply pressure to the yarn and pull through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my safety pin and do this tape since I'm starting right here. I'm gonna safety pin the corner. And that's to help with uh, not a lot of separation. And I'm probably gonna go down the line this way. So I'm gonna put in a couple more safety pins here, just so that my fabric all stays together. Okay. Okay, so now that you're threaded, <clears throat> we're going to start the tying process. So I'm always going to go the right way. Um, I'm always going to go the same way and so that I know, uh, I, I ensure that everything is going correctly. And so I'm always going to go from my right to my left and kind of in a little diagonal, but that's just me. So you push your needle through. And it can get kind of tricky pulling out the other side. So you're gonna pull through. And you're gonna pull through and leave enough however much you want, honestly. Um, and so I leave, let's see, that's about an inch there. And so it's gonna be up to you how much you want to leave. But then you're gonna go up the other side. And just wiggle your needle back and forth to look it through. And now we tie. Just give a nice little knot. Don't pull it too tight because then you're a fabric will bunch and you don't want that. And 
and then I cut to make it even. So that is how I'm going to do the whole quilt. So here, again, I'm doing the middle of the pinwheels and then in between where the pinwheels meet, I'm gonna be tying up here. So I'm just taking my measuring tape and I'm starting at the base where my border meets my pinwheels meets this border. And measuring up from there for what I think good. And then it will be the same every time after that. And it's just the same thing. If you wanted to, you could mark instead of marking a band. You go through instead of just doing it on the fly, but it's really I don't want the um, I don't want it to get all rumbled under there. I want it to still stay nice, which is why we use the safety pins to begin with. But I'm just moving that down. is binding so make sure to watch my video on how to bind and I can't wait to see your finished quilt. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the content coming up on Drink Wine Make Quilt.